Microevolution may lead to speciation, which is the process of forming a new species. In order to know when a new species is made, we need a proper definition. In the past, morphology alone was used to define a species by classifying organisms according to their internal and external structure and appearance. They were said to be different if they looked different enough, like lions and tigers. But then what about ligers? Yes, they're real. No, they aren't magical. This is a picture of a female and a male liger. Most ligers and tigons are infertile, though they are the largest cats. An amended definition of a species needed to be made. The biological species concept is a group of individual organisms that are capable of interbreeding to produce fertile offspring in nature. Lions and tigers wouldn't breed in nature because they're so far apart, and most of the ligers are infertile. So by the biological species concept, lions and tigers are still different species. New species can be formed by isolation, often either geographic or reproductive. In geographic isolation, also called allopatric speciation, the population is physically separated. Over time, the allele frequencies in the populations will change because physical barriers, like rivers, canyons, or oceans, keep them from rejoining their original population. In reproductive isolation, a population experiences barriers that prevent them from reproducing to make fertile offspring. These differences often arise because of temporal isolation or behavioral isolation. Temporal isolation occurs when populations in the same region mate or flower at different seasons or different times of the year. Flowers may have different times when they bloom. Some in the region bloom in May and others in June. This creates a diversion in the gene pools, which could lead to speciation. This happens often with tropical orchids, which are triggered to bloom by temperature, but the amount of time they wait to bloom once the temperature drops will vary. Behavioral isolation can also cause sympatric speciation when populations differ in their courtship behavior. An example would be the mating dance of birds. A preference for certain dances in a population could lead to reproductive isolation between the bird populations with different mating dances. In plants and a few animals, polyploidy can lead to speciation. A polyploid organism has more than two sets of homologous chromosomes. This occurs most often in plants, when chromosomes duplicate in preparation for meiosis, but then meiosis doesn't occur. Then miraculously, the offspring are still fertile. Polyploid plants can self-fertilize, increasing their population. The Allium genus, which includes onions, leeks, garlic, and chives, have many instances of polyploidy. Isolation isn't the only pressure that leads to speciation. Other examples of pressure include overpopulation, which leads to resource competition, and changing environments and predators. These pressures lead to natural selection. There are three types of natural selection, directional, stabilizing, and disruptive. In directional selection, individuals that display a more extreme form of a trait have a greater fitness than individuals with an average form of the trait. For example, the peppered moth population of England during the Industrial Revolution had higher frequencies of the darker color because it was well camouflaged in the soot-covered trees. The lighter colored moths would have been easily seen and eaten by birds. So the darker trait became more common. In stabilizing selection, individuals with the average form of the trait have the highest fitness. For example, in robin's eggs, a clutch of four eggs is best, because too few, and there might not be any that survive, but too many, and it's going to be too hard to feed and sustain them. Four is the best balance, and it's the number laid most often by robins. In disruptive selection, individuals with either extreme variation of a trait have greater fitness than individuals with the average form of the trait. For example, Chinook salmon males compete with each other to fertilize the female's eggs. Large fish have an advantage because they're strong fighters, but smaller fish have an advantage because they can sneak in while the large fish are fighting and fertilize the eggs without being seen. 
Medium fish aren't big enough to fight and are too big to sneak in without getting caught. It pays to be extreme in this case. There are two theories about the pace at which evolution occurs, gradualism and punctuated equilibrium. It's likely that both are true, but occur in different circumstances. Gradualism was supported by Charles Darwin, and the theory is that species slowly change through a series of intermediate forms. The trouble is, the fossil record lacks those intermediate forms, and there are instead suddenly different species in layers of rock. To account for the gaps in the fossil record, punctuated equilibrium was used to explain that there are long periods of relatively low amounts of evolution, which are punctuated with periods of rapid evolution. This implies that the gaps in the fossil record aren't gaps, but indicators of the pace of evolution. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.